Hey, this is Nadira Bray with Animals Talk on the Talk of San Diego, and I am here with Linda and Tiana at the Animal Care Facility in Chula Vista. So, Linda, how did the 5th of July go? Well, it's the 5th of July. It's a bad day, but I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this for 22 years, and it has actually went very smoothly. We were prepared. Our director brought us lunch because we didn't get any lunch breaks. Um, and we were actually able to take customers even before we opened to help get these strays processed, get them into the shelter, check them for microchips, and contact their owners as soon as possible. So overall that day, we took in 29 dogs, and 12 of them went home that day because of either microchips or their license tax. So it was great. Um, to date, from the 5th until this morning, we've taken in 41 dogs. The claim rates of going down, we've only so far only had 15 go home with their owners. So we really want to talk again about what to do if you lost your pet, what to do if you found a pet, because we don't want to sit here two weeks later and say, I still have 4th of July animals that need to find their owners, all right? So we're going to have Tiana talk, and just do a recap of what we talked about last week about um, recovery and what to do if you find a pet and such. All right, well, that was my first fifth I've ever worked, and I don't want another one. <laughs> so, take our advice of doing your preparation before the fourth, okay? So, what to do if you lost your pet? Some recovery here going on. Um, check every shelter. Although you may belong to this shelter in your city, check other shelters as well. You can go online to petharbor.com. Um, but again, nothing beats coming in in person and seeing your dog uh, or cat. Also, uh, your internet searches, your Finding Rover, your Craigslist, Facebook has a lot of um, groups that are uh, searching for dogs and helping reunite families. So look on there and see if anybody is posting your dog. And also put up flyers. Send those flyers up to like, vet clinics, um, shelters around, neighbors, uh, dog parks, parks in general, pet stores too, and put those out there. I want to interject with that, Tiana, with the flyers. The flyers are really important. We actually get flyers emailed to us, and we put those in our lost and found book. Um, the, the intake people, that those are the, the people who first handle that animal back to scan them for a microchip and give them their intake vaccinations. They have an entire wall covered with lost and found flyers. So they are checking and then I get them emailed to me so every day when I go through and look at the animals here in the shelter, I'm looking through going, hey, I think I know that dog or hey, I think I know that cat's here. And I will call and email the people who have sent me that flyer going, you need to come down and identify your pets. So flyers are important. I mean, everything's important that we cover. Coming to the shelters, doing those internet searches, finding Rover, if you don't have a, you know, if you didn't download the app and we told you to do it last week, you can still go to Google Play Store, download the app. Everybody has photos of their pets, so take a picture of uh, take a picture of that picture of that dog and get them posted onto Finding Rover. Send out alerts that he's lost. So there's there's people out there to help you, but you also have to take the initiative and help yourself because we want these animals to go home. So the event on July 1st went really well. It was uh, very busy. We did 23 microchips. Plenty, plenty of people came in to get those samples of the, the common products, those natural products. They came in to get good advice. I had a couple of volunteers, which were the children of the employees here, and they helped out a lot. They actually uh, retained all the information I was saying and helped spread the word. So it was a great success. Awesome. And what else do you have to share with us? I know we talked a lot about recovery, mm -hmm. um, lost and found for the for the fourth of July or fifth of July. Um, do we have any more info? Would you love to share with San Diego? Well, overall, the microchipping clinics that all the, several agencies here in San Diego County were a great success. I know the Humane Society did it for a couple days. I don't have their numbers. But the Department of Animal Services for San Diego County, they did over a thousand chips. Wow. And 25% of those belong to our jurisdiction, so they will be getting into our database. 
And then, Tiana, what did you do on, on Saturday for your clinic? You did 23, right? I did 23 so microchips. That, that helps a lot. And microchipping is the key. Having ID tags, licenses on your dog's collars, those are really important to get those animals back to their owners because we want them to go back to their owners. We're going to have some more tips about what to do if you found a pet because now we're fine having people come in or call in and say, hey, I found a pet. What do I do? So we have our little key notes to help you remember. So what do we do if you found a pet? You bring them into the shelter. That's going to be the first thing. It is a legal and ethical thing to do. This is where the owners are looking for their pets. So bring them into the city in which you found the animal. Okay. Also, you're going to post online um, pictures of the animal, where you found them, and what shelter you actually brought them to. And make some flyers, hand it out to vet clinics, shelters, pet stores, and things like that of the animal you found and what shelter you actually brought them into, okay? And I'm going to just make a little notation. For finding a pet, we strive very hard at the animal shelters to find the owners of these pets. So when you bring a pet in, we're holding them for a minimum of four days, sometimes up to ten days, as we work and research microchips and such. Um, a little side note, because July 1st is the beginning of a fiscal year in the Animal Services Department. Imperial Beach residents now fall under San Diego Humane Society jurisdiction. They're the ones that will be patrolling that area. Um, you'll often found me, so you'll have to contact the San Diego Humane Society. Their phone number is 619-299-7012. But you guys can still come down to us to do adoptions. We'll still do our rabies clinics and microchip clinics. Rabies clinics are done every Wednesday from 10 to 4, and microchipping we do any time that we're open. So we're still here to help support the Imperial Beach residents. Oh, thank you. This is Nadira Bray on Animals Talk at the Talk of San Diego with Tiana and Linda at the Animal Care Facility. And is there any last words that we want to tell anybody today before, before we start our weekend? You know, we're going into double digits this weekend. But okay, it's going to be it. hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a really hot weekend. So, everybody, do a little search. We did a great segment a couple weeks ago about how keeping your pet cool. So it's really important this weekend to keep your pets cool. We don't want pets coming in here overheated. Okay, and I remember from that segment, um, and let me see if I get it right, that if the asphalt is 70, de or if it's 70 degrees outside, that the asphalt is 100. 20 degrees with their pets? Um, if it's 86 degrees outside, the asphalt's 120. Okay. So, so the so general rule yeah. is if you can't walk barefooted, don't have your pet walk out there. Okay. Yeah. And may I know, if your dog is walking quickly on this asphalt, keep up with them. It's probably because it's paws work. All right. Thank you, and have a great weekend.